Here's how you lay out points. Go to the job, click Applications, Layout Points. Now start tracking. The instrument's already pointed in my direction, so I'm just going to press the Lock On button. Okay, here is my current position. This is the point that is currently selected to be laid out. Now, you can lay out any point you want at any time just by clicking on it. I want to lay out F67, so I'm going to click on it. If I wanted to lay out P48, I would just click on it. You can see this is CW126. It's a concrete wall point. You can also select the next point by using these arrows. Now it'll cycle through all the CW points and it'll be the next point in order. So you could see the next one is CW127. So if I press the arrow, now CW127 is selected. You can cycle through points this way and it'll go through the point names. This button chooses between cycling to the next point in numerical order or cycling to the next point that's nearest to you. Let's click nearest point. So CW125 is the closest point to me. If I want to go to the next closest point, I'll press this arrow. See, CW124 is the next closest point. And I can go back to the previous one by pressing this arrow. Nearest point will also go to any of the other point names with different prefixes, such as F, P, or whatever. I just went from a CW point to a footing point, which has F, to a pier point, which has P in front of it, and you could cycle that way. But if you're on next point, it stays within that prefix. Right now, it's on F and then a number. If I hit next, it'll only go to an F. It'll stick with the Fs. So that's nice if you're laying out footings. And just remember, if you don't want to, if you're done with those footings and then you want to lay out this pier, just click it. Now when I press next, it's going to be on the pier points. And you can see P37, P38, P39. These are the points that you're selecting to lay out. So that's how you select points to lay out. Now we're going to talk about the commands. There's two different ways to know how to get to this point. One is I can see myself on the screen and I can see the point, and I could see myself walking towards that point. This is a good method for when you're far away and you want to just walk towards it. You don't need to look at any of those numbers right now that are on your screen telling you which way to go because I can visually see where I'm at. Once you get close, you want to zoom in, go ahead and rotate the plan so that the top of the crosshair matches your red line. That red line is a line that goes from your current position to the instrument. The reason we line this up is because these numbers are giving you very accurate directions to get to this point. But in order for those to make sense, you need to be facing the instrument because they're based off of looking at the instrument. And you can see that since this dimension is on the right side of this crosshair, that means we need to go to the right. And since this dimension is on the bottom of the crosshair, that means we need to go away from the instrument. And it's all based on looking at the instrument. So before you move, you need to make sure these numbers are accurate. So you must plumb up your pole first. So I'm plumbing up my pole. All right, it's plumb. Now I look at those numbers and it says to move to the right seven inches and go back one inch and basically three quarters. Now that I got that information in my head, I'm looking down at the tip of the point and I'm going to move it seven inches to the right based on facing the instrument. So I'm moving it over seven inches and then back an inch and something. And now before I look at those numbers, I'm going to plumb up the pole 
Now I'm looking at those numbers. So it's saying go to the instrument one eighth and go left three quarters. So now I'm looking down at the tip of the pole. I'm going to move it to the instrument one eighth and left three quarters. Now I'm not looking at those numbers. I'm looking at the bubble and I am plumbing up my pole using the bubble. Once the bubble is good, now I'll look down at my screen. Okay, you've also noticed that it is turned green. This means I'm within my tolerance settings that I've set. I have my tolerance setting to a horizontal tolerance of a quarter inch. Anytime I'm within a quarter inch, the screen will turn green like this. Now you can save this point by pressing this button. It gives you a little preview of what you're about to save. It's in tolerance, and we're going to hit OK. Now, if I zoom out, I just saved this point, P39, and it has a green filled in circle. And that's because this was laid out to within tolerance. If it wasn't in tolerance, it'd be red. See how P38 is a unfilled circle? That's because I have not laid it out yet. I just laid out P39 and I have next point selected as how it cycles through points. So it automatically went to P40 as my next point to lay out. But that's all the way over there and I want to mark P38. So I'm just going to click on it. There we go. Now it's saying go to the right two feet three inches, go back one foot four. I'm far enough away from it, I'm just going to look at my screen and watch myself move close to it. Now I'm pretty close. I'm going to face the instrument, then I'm going to plumb up the pole by getting the bubble centered. Now I'm looking at those numbers. So it says I need to go to the station 1 16th and write 5 eighths. Alright, so I'm basically just going to move it right 5 eighths. All right, I moved the tip of the pole right, 5 eighths. Now I'm going to plumb up. All right, I'm within my tolerance. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to save this. Hit OK. And now it's going to, still wants to go to the next point in the numerical order. So I'm just going to switch this to nearest point. And since I'm not laying out these footing points, I'm going to turn these footing points off. I don't want them to be included in the nearest points. Let me turn those off. I'm going to go back and I just need to plus one more time. Okay, so now it's actually laying out the nearest pier points. And I'm going to rotate my screen so that the top of my crosshair is lined up with that red line. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because this is about where I want to view it. Now I'm in the as is mode. This is what enables me to rotate my screen, zoom in, zoom out, pan the screen how I wish. It's basically the manual viewing mode. There's some automatic viewing modes, and we'll get into those in another video. So let me hide this menu. And again, I'm not look, looking at those numbers. I'm just going to move to the point. Now I'm pretty close to it. I'm going to set the prism pole down. I'm going to plumb it up, and then I'm going to look at my numbers. To the station three quarters, left, one inch and a quarter. So now I'm moving the tip, three quarters, and left, an inch and a quarter. Plumbing up the pole. Those numbers are not accurate until you plumb up the pole. Um, within tolerance, although personally I would get in closer than this. If I'm laying out this pier, I would want it to be like zero, zero. Um, and then you could save it. So that's layout points.